Today, we are living in a time when repairing consumer electronics goods normally doesn't make much sense. But I do it sometimes just because I find it interesting and also because I believe I can learn a lot by looking at what other designers have done and where they have failed. Recently, my Verni Apollo light, which was provided by Gearbest for another client to review, broke down. The power button, when I pressed it, sent multiple power button events and so the phone locked up, restarted and went bonkers. And I managed to solve the problem and learned quite a bit in the process about what can go wrong with power buttons. The first technically interesting aspect I see are these little hooks here. You see that the case essentially clamps onto the top of the phone much like this. And so you have to break it open that way here with some tool. Some people use these new final plastic thingies. I just use a batch of small screwdrivers. And well, I have to admit that of course there will be some blemishes in the case afterwards. But in my case, this is something I can live with because it's my personal phone. You have to be aware of one thing, of course. The engineers in the maintenance factory are laughing their ass off when they see this video because they normally have dedicated tools which make opening the phone really, really easy. But the lesson to take away here is that definitely these kind of clamp constructed cases can work because the phone actually feels quite solid. And while I'm trying to save you the rest of the scene of guy with neural disease tearing down into his phone, I wanted to share one little thing. This here is a suction cup and it sucks to almost anything except to this because it's too uneven. And it can be really helpful when taking apart things such as this because you see you attach it and then you can apply force to a part against which you normally couldn't apply a force. The key point when tearing down these kind of things is you need to get one complete corner open. So I had to break up this part a little bit and now you see the case is essentially almost my oyster. You see here there is this fingerprint sensor cable but this is not so much our problem because the problematic area is the buttons which sit right here. When we look carefully around here we can see part of the source of the problem. Gunk from my relatively sweaty hands collects in here. And this gunk then overhelms the relatively small pushing force of these buttons. I know that you guys are wanting to know what's the problem with this button. I'm gonna tell you in a minute, but before I've got a request, down there, there's a button which says subscribe. Please press it. I would be so sorry if you don't stay on the team. And with that, it's time to look at what happens inside. The pink part of this diagram is the soft foil, which is orange actually in the verni. And basically you have a button, which is like a cut with two contacts and a spring, which pushes outside. And in the outer shell, we've got the button, which the user can push in against the spring force. And now what is happening is, you see we've got a small gap here between the housing and between the button. And in this button gap, if there is something inside which is sticky, the force which this little spring can produce is too small to push the button out reliably and the contact gets closed and stays closed or starts to jump. And because I'm a pedant and I suffer from hyperhydroxy, I decided to file it up a, a little bit. For the round part, you use one of these round finger files and they also exist in a flat form, which you can use to open this part, the bottom part of the opening. And because I hate just showing what should not be done and not showing a good alternative. Here we've got the main board of a Palm M515. And you see here that the buttons are much larger 
and they are not foil buttons, but instead it's a real SMD button, which delivers significantly more strength when you press it. You can almost hear the clicking sound. And yes, of course, on top of it, there is this part here, which then fits inside of the case. What's wrong with the M515? We're going to discuss another day. In the meantime, I wanted to thank its former owner, who now operates a nice pub in Germany. As you can see here, I've since reassembled the phone and it works well for quite a few days. So, realistically, if you also have a Verony Apollo Lite, then this might be a mod which you should do to simplify your life. When you are working on your own designs, of course, the situation is a bit more complex because you've got customers who are always going to whine about trying to save money on buttons. One good counter argument is up there in the back. LeCroy had two series where the buttons always fell off. Up to this date, the company is not known for its high performance oscilloscopes, but for oscilloscopes where if you drag them, a bunch of buttons gets left behind.